In this video, I muck around with foam clay for the first time ever, and I try and take it as big as I can. This video is sponsored by Kingdom Maker, an amazing and free mobile game you can check out. Links in the description, more about that later in the video. Good morning, I am your glorious king, and uh, what is a king without a kingdom? Well, currently, I don't have one fully established. Let's go make one. A couple of weeks back, Amy said, have you ever tried foam clay? I said, no, I haven't, and I grabbed it. It feels like foam, but it's malleable, it's clay, and it air dries. Now, apparently, the way to glue it is literally just with a tiny little bit of water. Little bit of water, and if I just pop that on there, that will tack up and glue. But apparently, the other thing you can do is mix colors. I'm excited. So excited, in fact, that I bought all of the foam clay that they had at the local shop. <laughs> oh, and we got big tubs. So, you know, I don't have to feel held back. I jumped straight into my foam clay dabble by unpacking all my lovely little foam clay colours and mixing up a variety I think will work for landscape features on top of this green foam sheet that I'm working on top of. The foam clay mixes really well and it's super simple, just like mixing any sort of colours or paint. If you want to lighten it, add a little white, but that removes a bit of saturation. You can brighten colours by mixing in the primaries or dilute them or soften them by mixing in whites, greys or other colours. And then just folding it into itself repeatedly, just like polymer clay, until you end up with the colour that you're looking for. I made a variety of sandy colours that I think could lie down along the roads and try to create a gradient by making a lighter coloured sandy noodle that I lied down in the middle, wet and massaged until I could get a bit of a gradient. It turns out it works pretty well. The water seems to really soften and even slightly dilute this foam clay to the point where not only does it get sticky, but it can really thin out and you get some pretty smooth transitions. With the path in a place I was happy with, I wanted to add a bit of variety with the green of the landscape. So I mixed a slight difference in variation of color and added a few different mounds and tried to blend it by wetting it and smoothing it into that original green and then added a little bit of texture by dabbing with a rough brush. Now it's time to detail out my terrain, starting off with a foam wall, which would be the basis of the outer wall of the city measured to go around the circumference, but then taken aside and packed around with a brown foam clay. This would represent a bit of a wooden wall which would set the tone of the makings of my early settlement. You gotta have defenses at the end of the day, even if you are just a little village to start off with. With my square foam noodle cut, covered, and in place, I added a bit of texture to give it that appearance of wood slats wrapped around a barricade, and then moved on to filling my town. I really love the simple look that this foam clay has. It has a really nice matte finish that looks really clean and cartoony. And by making these simple shapes for houses, putting on some roofs, lightly texturing, and adding different color for the straw, I got a look I was really happy with. Moving on to the trees, going from darker layers at the bottom to lighter at the top, and keeping a geometric shape the whole thing was looking really cartoony and fun. It all worked really well for me and I was starting to really love working with foam clay. First impression, this is really fun. It's hard to get super detailed and crisp, but at the same time, there's like a matte squishy finish on the surface of this stuff that just looks really nice and it's, it makes it really satisfying to work with. But it would be easier to make a kingdom if, I could, if there was an app that I could download and play a game centered around making kingdoms. Oh wait, you can! With Kingdom Maker, the sponsor of this video. And you can be a Kingdom Maker too by getting the app Kingdom Maker and playing your way to the top. Kingdom Maker is the first strategy mobile game that allows you to tell your own story through this unique, stylized and very funny one. You can customize everything from where your city is located to how your nobles should dress and appear. You can even have a royal boink and ensure your lineage continues. I'm not joking, it's a feature in the game and it's very entertaining. Battle your opponents with custom assembled armies and units to conquer the land and complete in real-time combat. Beyond battle, you can also betray, driven through diplomacy and all the social features of the game. Use the promo code JASTARTER1 in the game to get your exclusive gift from Kingdom Maker. Get it on iOS and Android today with the link in the description. You won't regret it. It's a load of fun and a huge thank you to Kingdom Maker for sponsoring this video.
Now, as you can tell, this is the starting sort of village aesthetic in Kingdom Maker. So I've done my starter kingdom for my dabble. I'm gonna do my big kingdom for my dive. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't realize at this point how ambitious I was being. You'll see later in this project that I was biting a fool that I could chew by myself, but I don't regret it because this, as you will also see, is a really fun project. But I don't wanna jump the gun. Let's focus on where we are right now. A large cardboard tube to use as turrets for my castle that I could lay around and then and picking one of those to work from as a foundation to add blocking. Some square or castle walls around the outside. I use these foam floor mats that most people have seen with those interlocking edges to build the structure of the square areas of the castle. Now the really happy accident is it turns out those jagged interlocking edges, especially at this scale, are kind of perfect for the top battlements of the walls and edges of the castle. And the foam mats I had conveniently had these as removable with a clean cut so that I could actually glue them one to each other with the textured side in the middle to keep that foam look on the outside and have a nice thick battlement edge at the top. I had all of these awesome pieces individually and it was time to start figuring out how to sort of construct the entirety of my castle. I'm building from the center out, creating a keep in the center of the castle which the entire wall structure can surround. I'm gonna add a little bit of terrain around the outer edges of the wall to show that we've built our castle at the top of a hill that's defensible. Now it's time to add some texture to that terrain. Now, I grabbed one of my big tubs of foam clay, which was in a gray, and started ramming this into rock molds. This was actually a suggestion Amy gave me, and normally I've used these rock molds for terrain videos using plaster, and it looks really cool. And I was really curious to see how it would turn out with foam clay. But I mean, at the end of the day, foam clay is malleable, the molds hold a shape, and once it sets, in theory, you just remove it, and it's a mold, hopefully, it'll look like rocks to entirely surround my castle. Subjects, stone reserves are up 43%. Well done! It's one of those days again. It's always one of those days. It's time to visit our neighboring allies over in Tabletop Town. How does work proceed, good ally? It goes well. Do we remain on good terms? Yes. Negotiations have succeeded! Look at that! Look at my bloody foam rocks! Bloody legendary! That worked way better than I expected, but I should I should have expected it because it was recommended to me from someone who actually... This is your fault this video has happened. Come on in. <laughs> so I'm getting an extra hand in this video. This is Amy, who actually walked into my office a couple of months ago with one of these and said, have you ever heard of foam clay? And I said, no. And I grabbed it and went, <laughs> and here we are. So I have bitten off uh, more than I can chew and you're here to help me finish it. It's your fault, Amy. So we set about getting to work refining the castle. I wanted the whole thing to feel like a foam creation, which means surrounding all of the cardboard with thin layers of foam and keeping that foam aesthetic throughout. And then of course I needed to put together the full structure of the layout of the castle, gluing everything in place and deciding how it all connects to the main keep. As this creation is inspired by Kingdom Maker and that cartoony aesthetic and really fun feel, I thought it'd be great to keep things simple, but allude to a little bit of that grandeur. I want it to feel like foam and be fun and playful, but also still be epic and a cool castle. Ooh, all right, here is the update. We have roofs that we haven't attached yet, but this, this will give you a glimpse as to sort of what we're working towards, which I'm loving. Amy has color matched the light gray that we had to be much closer to this gray, because the idea is we're gonna to wanna to minimize painting as much as possible and use the foam clay to gap fill and adhere to all the foam that we've put down to try and get some organic textures. So, time to gap fill and start to bring out some details. 
So this is where the foam clay started to really shine. I knew I liked the foam clay from the dabble, but when it comes to this dive, as you can see, most of the work has been primarily done with the foam sheets, rolls, and cardboard, but it's bringing it all together and making it pop that the foam clay really sings. From the texture of the rocks all around the base of the castle that really give it that touch of realism without looking too serious, and then adding texture all around the walls. By color matching the foam tubs we have to suit the wall color, pushing it firmly, especially against all of the gaps or where there was any hot glue showing and then watering it down and really smoothing it out and massaging it into it, we got a really nice, interesting, varied texture that was reminiscent of that naturalistic look of cement or, or render that these old castles sort of had. It gives a great vibe of asymmetry throughout the castle while keeping everything the same color and still foamy and simplistic. Speaking of color, this is where it's really time to kick things up a notch or two. As soon as we started applying the green to the surface areas of the grassy interiors of the castle courtyard, and mixing up some earthy colors to go around the edges, everything really started to come to life. I created a path in the middle, heading towards what would be the central door of the main keep, and then moved on to the browns that would go at the top of the battlements and then be smoothed out and textured to create wooden walking surface areas. Everything really started to pop. My beautiful kingdom was really starting to come to life. And here we are, this is progress so far. The, adding that pop of color and then texturing those walls has made all the difference. So we're gonna sculpt separate to this, final details, some windows and some textures, maybe some bricks, I'm not sure. Things that we can just glue on to finish it off. And then uh, maybe just a little spot of color just to bring out a little bit of the punch, maybe whether it be a dry brush or an airbrush, but nothing too crazy. Cause I'm loving that simple flat color aesthetic. It looks so like I am just, yeah, this is fun. I like this one. Now on to the finishing touches of my castle, which as you will see, make all the difference. I cut out little foam windows that I could then cover with my color matched foam clay, give a little bit of texture for brickwork and using the same method for what would be doorway frames. These were little pieces I could stick on later to add detail throughout the castle. And I was following the color scheme for the logo of Kingdom Maker, those red flags with that bluish roof. And Kingdom Maker, of course, is the aesthetic inspiration as well as the sponsor of this video, which is why I was also keeping that traditional fantasy vibe with the cartoony edge to add flavor. It really works to the strength of foam clay. And with all of those pieces dry, it's just about nipping, tucking, and gluing it all in place to create something truly spectacular. My kingdom, it is glorious and complete. Let's uh, wrap up this video with a bit of a, a kingdom tour. I have uh, the Royal Wizard's Tower over here. That is where the, the people who work computers are. As uh, it's all magic to me, I don't understand a bit of it. How's work progressing, Jen? Uh, pretty good. Uh, what, yeah. are we, what are we typing here? Uh, Words on the computer? Yep. How yep. does that work? Uh, well you just press them on the cable and they appear. You truly are an expert in information technology, Jen. The gatehouse, that's where people enter my kingdom upon request, of course. And here is the royal bedchamber. Let's face it, it was all built to facilitate that. But we can't run a kingdom when we're talking about sexy sex all the time. Or can we? Ah, I shall proceed to have my royal boink. Very nice. Good one. 